Today we're going to be learning how to light a Bunsen burner, how to maintain the flame, and we're going to learn a little bit about the features of the flame. <coughs> okay, so whenever you light a Bunsen burner, you always light the match first before you turn on the gas. You turn on the gas like that, and you open the fuel valve, which is on the bottom here. When you do that, you get a nice bright yellow flame. This flame is pretty useless. Um, it's not the kind of flame that you want to do anything with. Okay, it's uh, not as hot as you'd like it to be. Um, and the reason it's like that is because we haven't added any oxygen. Um, the oxygen that is mixing with the flame is only coming after the, the fuel has come out and uh, it's after it's already hot. So we want to pre-mix the air. We do that by adjusting this barrel right here. And as I do that, the flame becomes nearly invisible. But if I adjust it correctly, you can hear a rushing sound. That's because the air is moving a lot faster now. Okay, so that's how to adjust that. First you turn that on, you open the fuel valve and light it, and then you adjust the air to make it, um, to make it have the correct fuel and air mixture. All right, so a couple of features of the flame. Um, if we have one of these flames, this yellow flame, this is an improperly adjusted flame and it means that we don't have enough air, we don't have enough oxygen. It looks a lot like a candle flame. Okay, now the reason a candle flame glows the way it does is because we have unburned fuel. The unburned fuel in the case of the candle is a candle wax. And we can actually collect some of that unburned fuel <coughs> on a piece of glass and you get this black stuff. That's the stuff that's glowing so hot and yellow here. It's actually so hot that it glows. Same thing is happening here, but the particles are a lot smaller, so I can't collect them on the glass. So the same thing is happening here. We get glowing because particles in that gas are glowing. There's solid pieces of, of material there, although in this case it is a gas. Now, um, the air is moving pretty slowly through there. The gas is moving slowly, uh, and it flickers just like a candle flame flickers. You can actually make that flame move around like that. Um, it's useless for doing anything in the lab because a lot of applications in the lab you actually want to see what color things change uh, when you heat them. Now this is called an oxidizing flame. If, it's, uh, if you're up close to it or if you have a darkened room, you can see it's pretty blue. Maybe against my white lab coat, you can see that it's blue. Um, it makes a very rushing, a rushing sound of air because the air is moving very fast through there. That tells you that the flame is adjusted properly. Um, now, there's some things about the flame that you need to know. You might think that up here is the hottest part of the flame. In fact, right here at the tip of the inner cone is a double cone structure. This is outer cone and a little inner cone right there. And the top of this inner cone is where it gets the hottest. So if I put a piece of metal in there, that's where it'll get the hottest. And actually make it glow red hot by putting it there. Now, can you see it glowing there? Okay, it's harder to get it to glow up here. It's already pretty hot, so it's probably still glowing. But it's glowing hot. But this is the hottest part, right there. But inside this inner cone is where the fuel and air are mixed but not yet burning. Okay, and let me demonstrate what I mean by mixed but not yet burning. Um, it's already adjusted. I have here a match that I have on a paper clip that I've changed the shape of it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I can suspend the match right in the middle. Okay, let me move that over. All right, now I'm going to relight this with the match hanging there. What do you think is going to happen? So you're going to light the match in the middle, no. but it didn't. Okay, this should prove to you that that match is in a region where there is no flame. Okay, So that is a non-burning region uh, within this flame. That's where the fuel and air are mixed, but not yet burning. In order to make the match burn and to prove to you that it's not lit, because you may not be able to see it from where you're sitting, I can push it to the side a little bit, to the edge, and that flash of light was the match catching on fire.
Now, just like with the candle flame, just like with the candle flame, this flame produces carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is an invisible gas, uh, and it's really hard to collect it and prove that it's there. So you're going to have to trust me on that one. Now, with the, with the candle flame, I can prove that it produces water as one of the chemical products by making the water condense on the glass. collecting some condensation on the glass. Now, if I let that condensation go away, I can actually collect condensation from here, too. This also produces water in the flame. Can you guys see that that's condensation on it? That's because when the flame burns, and the fuel burns, it produces both carbon dioxide and water. So that's all I have for the demonstration for how to use a Bunsen burner and about the basics for the flames.